Welcome to American Focus. I'm Cole McNeely, your guest host this week, filling in for the Center Square's executive editor, Dan McCaleb. Joining me as he does Dan every single week is the Center Square's Washington, D.C. Bureau Chief, Casey Harper. Casey, how are you doing, sir? Doing good. Doing good. I almost called you Dan. Doing good, Cole. Just want you to know that you should feel no insecurity and that you are almost as good as as Dan. I appreciate that. And and I want mm-hmm. you to feel no insecurity in, in telling you that off air, Dan Great, told I me appreciate there's that. about 50 employees here. Then I think uh-huh. there's about four dozen that he liked more than you. So I know you mentioned well, in previous podcast, favorite employee, all Dan that. Dan doesn't but, see me uh, as an employee. He sees me as a son, actually. <laughs> oh, nice. So I'm family. Yeah, at a boy. So. <laughs> a boy. Um, but you want right, to get touche. to the news here? Uh, we should get to the news. I know mm-hmm. we should. Uh, Casey, you have been busy as can be. Uh, chasing down indictments and investigations into presidents and presidential candidates. And uh, it goes on and on and on and on. And it, and it seems like these things will never end, but potentially they could end eventually. There was a trial date set for Donald Trump. I, I believe this, and correct me if I'm wrong, this was for the Georgia case for March 4th, which is right in the middle of the Republican primary. Let's talk about the trial date being set. And, and of course, he, he pleaded not guilty to the Georgia election charges as well. What is the latest up-to-date information we have on everything surrounding the, the greater Trumposphere? Right. So this is actually the district, the, the D.C. case. So there's a lot of cases and it is confusing. And I have to constantly check to make sure I don't confuse them. But a few things are happening uh, across multiple indictments at the same time. And, uh, what the updates this week were that the trial date, as you said, was set for the election interference DC case. There's two election interference cases, one in DC, one in Georgia. And then there is the Stormy Daniels payments in New York and a classified documents case in Florida. Am I wrong in thinking that his attorney in Georgia was trying to, because wasn't, wasn't there an idea that they were trying to push back the trial date? Well, so Trump has tried to push back all the trial dates. Um, in Georgia, you know, he's trying to push them back into like 2026, basically well beyond the election. Um, and he's been unsuccessful in that. He just pled guilty, as you m- mentioned, to his Georgia election charges this week. So he pled not guilty to those. Um, he has a few court dates really in early next year. He's got, um, as you said, this one that was just set for the D.C. election interference case is the day for Super Tuesday, which is so interesting. Super Tuesday is there's about 15 states uh, that vote for their their Republican primary, you know, um, candidate. And the day before Trump is going to be dominating the news in court, um, you know, I mean, we saw what that mugshot did to him. I don't know. Did you did you see what was your experience of the mugshot release, Cole, I'd be interested to hear and how it played on Twitter in your mind, because that's going to be the same kind of thing that happens the day before one of the biggest primary dates um, here in March. Yeah, well, I, I think from my perspective, um, you know, obviously in my role for context here, I'm not a journalist exactly. So I'm general manager of America's Talking Network, which produces podcasts like this one. So deal with a lot of different sorts of content. So you hear a lot of different sort of commentary. I told my wife, I said, you know, this is when it, when I first saw it pop up, it was more of this, you know, living through history moment than necessarily any sort mm-hmm. of political reaction. It was like this was yeah. this is a notable thing that for the rest of our lives. Lives, we will remember the day that that mugshot came out because it was, uh, you know, obviously the the indictments and the arrest and, you know, all that was also historical. But, you know, there's something about the visual representation of it that you just know that that's going to be featured in textbooks one day. Uh, so that that was yeah. kind of my initial reaction. And then the obvious other reaction that came out was, uh, well, this is certainly going to turn into a, a just political toy for both sides, right? So mm-hmm. this is going to be for the Trump campaign. This is going to be a, uh, you know, this this visual representation of the system, quote unquote, going after him. And I'm putting all of that in quotes because that's what they're going to say. Then on the left, obviously, or even his Republican opponents that are, are challenging him in, in the primaries, uh, that it's going to be this representation that he is he is unfit for the presidency and that this is just once again, you know, the justice system showing that to be the case. So to me, it was here's history 
in live time. And then two, oh man, we're going to see this picture for the next year and a half from everybody. Some saying this is the best thing to happen for the campaign and others saying that this is the perfect representation as to why this campaign should be suspended. And I think you even had people in the Republican Party saying that. I think there were, I forget who, what, which senator came out and said he should drop out. But I mean, it's just like, man, you just know that this, that all of this drama, it's the justice system. So calling it drama may be downplaying it a little bit, but is going to, as far as I would call it, <laughs> heighten the annoyance of the general election, you know, time period in, in DC right. in the next couple months here. Yeah. It's been crazy how all of our recent major election, you know, presidential elections have had the legal system, right? Interwoven with them and potential charges and investigations. And, you know, we've talked a lot in this podcast about how President Joe Biden seemingly has his own version of that, though uh, there's been no formal charges against him, of course. So his son does face some and it seems like his son is in more trouble than originally thought because his plea deal fell through and now potentially more charges are coming through. So there's going to be a lot of uh, legalese, a lot of court talk, you know, th- and it's definitely going to impact both the primary and the general, as I said, um, day before Super Tuesday, these charges uh are He's going to Trump's going to be um, all over the news. And then, you know, he has, I think, nearly 100 charges total uh, across four states. And we don't know. You know, there could be other indictments coming. There are other states where, you know, there are questions about the election um, and Trump's team or Trump, you know, Trump himself was complaining of those results besides just Georgia. Right. And so, uh, you know, it's unclear whether that reached the level of Georgia, but it's possible more state indictments could come. Um, I'm not sure what that will do at this point. I mean, what's another indictment, I guess, but it's going to be yeah. something we're going to be following close at the center square.com for sure. Yeah, for sure. Well, and I think it's, uh, you know, notable. And I think you guys have, have talked about this to a degree, but Georgia case being a state case and not a federal case, state case. So if he is found guilty in that case, innocent, he'll proven guilty. But if he is found guilty, that that wouldn't be a, an offense that would be able to be pardoned from a federal level. So that would only be able to be pardoned from a state level, which is why I think the, uh, you know, a lot of people are, you know, well, it's an, it's another set of indictments. Well, sure. But it, you know, now this but is could, a set could of the governor pardon him too. That's a question. But right. It could you be are exactly right. What'd you say? I said, you're exactly right. Oh, that's what I thought you said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That seems like a great place to it, end it this does. podcast. To me, it honestly. does. I thought, you know, I thought for a second yeah. there was a genuine internet connection issue, but obviously uh, it's Casey uh-huh. Harper no, no, fishing no, no. for compliments. So uh, if you want more of that exactly right sort uh-huh. of reporting that only comes from the news desk of Casey <laughs> Harper, you can keep up with this story and more at the center square.com for Casey Harper. I'm Cole McNeely. Thanks for listening to American focus. Please subscribe. Thank you.